This video was brought to you by Stoinberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? Behind me here, I have a Tesla Model X100D. You guys might recognize this. This used to be in Stavanger. I drove it to uh, Oslo for a guy, and I'm gonna check degradation on it. So uh, it was uh, so uh, it was first registered in 2017. So this car, or oh, September. Yeah, this car is about four years old and it has done almost 100,000 kilometers. So it will be interesting to see how much degradation it has. So in preparation, I have charged the car to 100% because that might help calibrating it and giving us more correct numbers. But I can show you that if you come inside here, um, it will just say charging complete. You don't see how much battery capacity you have like most cars, Mo, no cars will show, no EVs will show you that, how many kilowatt hour you have. And if you go to distance, you see that you have 433 kilometers of range. Okay, and then what, right? Um, and you can't really tell how many kilowatt hours you have. So uh, what we're gonna do is hook up this. Oh yeah, okay, I should tell you also, uh, I forgot. Uh, you could look at how many kilometers you had when the car was new and then versus now but remember that this is four year old car we've been receiving lots of updates since then and tesla will from time to time change the way the car estimates range so it means that 433 kilometers today uh, let's say maybe before some update maybe it show 440 kilometers or 420 kilometers so how can you then tell accurately how to uh, change uh, check degradation well uh kilowatt hours never change the definition of kilowatt hour never changes that's what we're going to check so to do that i have this one here which is okay uh, if you don't look at this, this part here is the adapter to make a standard obd port and then i have the obd adapter here so in order to access the model x you have to go here i'm going to show you i'm going to pull it out it's actually fairly easy on the model x um let me oh let me move the camera a little bit so what you have to do is this shelf under the screen just push it down uh, well, hang on. even i can do it there there and then there is some clips here so just be careful so you don't scratch the the trim under the screen just like this yeah you take out the shelf and then you find there is a small plug and a big plug. Find the small plug and you see that this adapter will fit right in. Wait, which way? There, click. And now it powers on the, the OBD adapter and we can check the stats in uh, SkyMy Tesla. So here you see Model X 100D. This is pre-Raven. This is four year old car. I think Raven came about two years ago. Almost 100,000 kilometers. And if you look here, Let's zoom in better to see better. So what you want to see is this one. Nominal full pack, 93.7 kilowatt hour. Energy buffer, oh, well, this car actually has five kilowatt hour energy buffer, I guess because it's a big pack. Uh, but you know, in the, back in the days, I used to charge the car to 100% and then discharge it to almost zero and then measure how much we actually get out of it. But I've seen over and over and over again that every time I do it, you don't get, uh, okay, if you take, uh, what is this energy buffer? It's the buffer below 0%. Well, we are actually at 99.9% .9 now. Okay, close enough. It doesn't matter too much because we're looking at the nominal full pack. Uh, so, yeah, we actually lost 0.1 kilowatt hour by just standing here after the car finished charging. But well, this is actually expect the remaining. So, you see, something like this that um, um, the nominal is maybe best case in the lab. But when I actually drive the car, I usually get one kilowatt hour less than what the car thinks because you have hills, you have acceleration, deacceleration, a little bit of losses here and there that is not measured in the car's instrument. It's just heat generated in the battery as it discharges. So um, what you can do as a simplification then is to take the nominal full pack minus five kilowatt hour buffer because that's what's below zero, we don't count it minus one kilowatt hour extra and that means 87.7 kilowatt hour and that is actually pretty good 
87.7 kilowatt hour. Um, but then we need to know how much did this car have when it was new. And of course, we haven't tested exactly this one, but each battery should be the same. There shouldn't be weird variation. And I measured over and over again that when the car was new, uh, this battery pack should give you 90. Well, okay, uh -huh, it's kind of confusing, but it should give you 93. Point, no, no, 92.7 kilowatt hour um, with that initial buffer. So now comes the interesting question because um, uh, actually when the car is new, this not only does it apply to Tesla, but also other cars I've seen is that many cars know that lithium batteries have an initial degradation. So uh, usually what you will see is that if I switch here to, yeah, yeah I can show you here in Tesla, uh, or it, ma many car, I mean, the, the, the way lithium batteries work is that when the battery is branch banking new, it will degrade somewhat significant the first three to six months. And it seems like many car manufacturers, they, they take that in account. So actually what you get is a battery that is actually slightly better than spec or to put it the other way, the spec is slightly lower because they expected the, 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 the drop. So let me make an example here. When I look at um, uh, the branch banking new i3 with 120 amp hour, when I look into what well, is not called Skyman Tesla, I look into the electrified app, it was showing 129 amp hour, not 120. But then for the first few weeks, it started dropping to 125 amp hours and then BMW probably figures out that within the first six months or something, it will drop to 120 amp hour. When I tested the Kona and e Nero and eSoul, when they are branch banking new, they will deliver 100, uh, they will deliver 65 kilowatt hour, but by specification, it has 64 kilowatt hour. Tesla, on the other hand, hides that initial degradation by just, when you charge the car to 100%, let's say 100% is 4 to 33 when it was new, simplified, it will keep charging, but the kilometer doesn't go up, the percentage doesn't go up, and then it will actually add another two and a half kilowatt hour roughly. I think it was 2.8, 2 2.7 kilowatt hour past that point. And then you discharge it, uh, and then when, once you start driving, you will actually be able to drive uh, over 10 kilometers, usually 10, 15 kilometers before you see kilometers here dropping. <laughs> but in the trip meter, you will see that it spends kilowatt hour, but it will still stay at 100%. It will still, yeah. So, so, so the big question is then, how do you measure degradation? Do you measure the, the, the energy we get now? 90, no, no, it was um, yeah, 80, 87.7 kilowatt. Oh, that was a little bit too close. 87.7 .7 kilowatt hour, do you measure it against what the car had, uh, like 93.7? No, no, 92.7, sorry, there's so many numbers here. In that case, we will have 5% degradation. Or do you measure it against what is more like by specification? Uh, then it's actually just 2-3% um, degradation. So I don't know really how to measure it, but I'm actually nowadays, I'm more leaning towards the, the later one that we should me measure it against this, the specified, um, the specified b battery capacity rather than the one that you initially get that you don't keep for more, more than six months. So uh, that is actually really good that you get so low, so low uh, degradation. Like how, how is it possible? Yeah, it's, it's actually around 3%. Yeah, I just double check my notes at two and a half or 3%. But I noticed something if you go down here. No, wait. Uh, da, 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 da. Here, look, look at this. Look at this number. AC charge total and DC. Oh, I'm sorry, this, sorry, DC and AC. Um, so what does this mean? <laughs> it means that the previous owners or the previous, I don't know how many owners, but this car is remarkable. It has AC charge a whole lot and DC charge very little. <laughs> it's, it's almost a rare case I see here. Usually, you know my cars, they, they, are, they usually have more DC than AC, but here, way, way lower. Uh, 
DC charging. So we, we have heard that fast charging degrades the battery faster. So again, if we measure this against um, the, uh, the, the best case, then we have only 3% degradation. After four years and 100,000 kilometers, so I think this is actually one case where you actually see that by avoiding DC fast charging, you will then have really good uh, or low battery degradation. Again, we can't just look at one case and say this is it. It's not significant. We need at least 50 cases before it becomes statistically significant. But I have to say when I enter here and I start looking at the numbers, this is really impressive that the car has so little degradation. Um, hopefully, uh, well, what we can't see is that how did they charge? Did they charge you 100% a lot or how did they do it? We, we actually don't know, but maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe what matters is that the car didn't fast charge or supercharge a lot. So I can also mention that this car can take 140, uh, I think it peaked 144 kilowatt when we were charging it. So it still charges pretty fast, but wow. So um, again, man, four year old car with so little degradation. This is <laughs> almost unreal. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.